To begin with, let's discuss some of the general production methodologies. We started off with by preparing the field, disking it, harrowing it, and leveling it. Then the next step is we use a hiller to pull up a false bed. After that step, we go through with a standard fumigation rig like growers throughout the state would use, and we apply the fumigants with that rig that is equipped with three backward swept shanks. And we apply different rates, different combinations with the same piece of equipment. The final step is we press the beds again and we cover the beds with a plastic mulch. In every case, and this is important to know, for all of these trials we use the TIF um, film. For the first experiment, I want to share with you the effects of different rates of Piclor 60. For this trial, each plot was 75 feet of an individual bed. It was a replicated trial with four replicates. The treatments were rates of Piclor 60 uh, from 0 to 500 in uh, 50 pounds per acre increments, and that is on a treated acre basis. The first graph that I want to show you looks at the effects of Piclor 60 rate on purple nut sedge density in the field. If you look at this, the x-axis, that's the line along the bottom, has Piclor 60 rate in pounds per acre from 0 up to 500 pounds. The other axis, the y-axis, has purple nut sedge density and the number per square meter. The black dots on this graph represent density in the spring and then the experiment was also conducted in the fall and that is the clear dots. And I want you to notice a couple of things. Number one, we did have a higher nuts as density in the fall than in the spring and control rates achieved in the spring were greater than that was, was achieved in the fall. So for example, in the spring, at about 150 pounds per acre, you have almost 100% control of purple nut sedge, whereas in the fall, at 500 pounds per acre, you significantly reduce the nut sedge population, but it's still not completely controlled. So now let's go to the field and let's look at some of the pictures of what those plots look like. In this first image, you can see the non-treated control. And I want you to notice two things. First of all, the number of purple nut sedge shoots that have punctured the plastic mulch. It's a very thick population. It's going to compete with the tomatoes and it's going to make removing that plastic mulch more difficult. I also want you to notice the tomatoes. And we're going to talk about tomato yield a little later, but you can see even in this image that there's a lot of stunting of the tomatoes. We had a lot of disease issues and it's a good example of why we would fumigate in Florida. The second image is at 150 pounds. This was done in the fall, so if you remember back to the graph at 150 pounds, we didn't have great control, as is reflected in this image with the high density of purple nut sedge still occurring in the plot. In this image, you can see the 250 pound rate, and again, still a significant number of nut sedge occurring in the plot. At 300 pounds per acre, which you can see in this image, you start to see some purple nut sedge control and there's a lot of variability still. So you start to see good control in some plots, not as good control in other plots in the image you're looking at right now. You can still see some purple nut sedge there but it's obviously better and if you look at the images one thing that should really jump out at you is the, the differences in the tomatoes. The bigger, the canopy is more full and thicker and the plants just look a whole lot better. Next image is at 350 pounds, still plants look great, um, good, fairly decent nut sedge control on these plots. The last rate is 500 pounds per acre, which is of course much higher than you would ever use, it's above the label rate, but you do notice pretty good control. If you remember back to the graph again, we did not get 100% nut sedge control even at 500 pounds per acre, but we've had a steady decrease and you can, as visible in this plot, pretty good control and the plants still look very good. The second graph I want to show you looks at the effect of Piclor 60 rate on yellow nut sedge tuber control. So for this study, we took bags of tubers and we buried them in the field 
and then we fumigate it. Two weeks later, we remove the tubers, and then we sprout them to test for viability. So basically what we're looking for is, at what rate is the fumigant able to kill a non-sprouted tuber, or a tuber that could have sprouted while it was in the soil and while there may have been some fumigant present, but they were buried as non-sprouted tubers. And if you look at this graph, it's the exact same setup as the last one, and very similar trends. The only difference is, is that the yellow nutsedge tubers in the spring had 100% control at every rate. So the non-fumigated tubers, the sprouting was about 55%, so about half the tubers sprouted. At any rate, from 100 pounds to 500 pounds, we had zero sprouting. But in the fall, again, um, sprouting where they weren't treated is about 75%, roughly. But you can see at 100, um, 200, 250, still a fair number of those tubers are sprouting. At 300 pounds and any rate higher, you get complete control of the yellow nutsedge tubers. The third graph I want to show you is set up the same as the previous two, but this one now is looking at common purslane seed germination. And what we do is we bury purslane seeds in bags, and porous bags in the soil, we fumigate. Two weeks later, we retrieve those bags. We then germinate those seeds in petri dishes in incubation chambers. And if you look at the dark black dots, that's the one we'll look at first. This is seed germination in the spring, and you'll notice we are at about 60% germination when it was not fumigated, and any fumigation rate killed 100% of the seeds. Unfortunately, in the fall, even in the non-treated, we didn't have great germination. It didn't seem to have an effect, probably because of the poor germination rate. But this data, although not perfect, does indicate that Piclor 60, even at fairly low rates of 100 pounds per acre, is able to control purslane seeds. The last graph I want to show you is very similar to the previous ones where we have effects of different rates of Piclor 60 but now we're looking at total tomato yield and you'll notice the general pattern is very similar between seasons even though there's some differences the important message here is tomato yields at no fumigation are very low and even at low fumigation rates as low as 150 pounds per acre you get a significant boost in tomato yield in both seasons if you look at the nonlinear regression, you can see that there was a continued increase in uh, tomato yield up to around 300 to 350 pounds per acre, at which point it begins to level off and even decrease in one of the seasons. So it seems like to maximize tomato yield in these particular field trials had to apply somewhere around the range of 300 to 350 pounds per acre, even when applied under TIF plastic mulch. The second trial I want to talk to you about looked at different rates of 1,3-dichloropropene, which I'm going to call telone for the rest of this um, presentation, as well as different rates of chloropicrin. So what, how we set this trial up is the initial fumigation was exactly the same as described previously, but now each treatment either had 0 or 15 gallons per acre of telone, 2, and then Within each one of those telone rates, the 0 or the 15 gallons per acre, we had 0, 50, 100, 150, or 200 pounds per acre of chloropicrin. And we had every possible combination, including a non-treated control. The first graph I want to show you has fall 2018, spring 2019, and then fall 2019. And we're looking at the nuts edge density, which is again the number per square meter. In every season, we tended to have more nutsedge where we did not have telone applied in the plots. It was only significant, however, in the spring 2019 where you see the blue bar, which represents no telone. You can see it's significantly higher than the red bars, which are 15 gallons per acre of telone or 1,3-D. I do want to point out that there are differences between the seasons and those differences are important. This first graph is fall 2018. This is the only 
season of the three that we saw this pattern, but this is a common pattern that we see in many studies that we have conducted here at GCREC. So it's a different chloropicrin rates, and this is the number of nuts edge per square meter. The black dots are no telone, and the clear dots are with the presence of telone. So let's look at the black dots first. And what you see is the zero, so the non-fumigated to 50 pounds per acre, you actually see an increase in nut sedge density. And that's not surprising. We often see low rates of chloropicrin can stimulate sprouting, so your nut sedge can actually be worse if you have chloropicrin on its own at low rates. But as the rate of chloropicrin increases, you start to see this decrease in the number of nut sedge. However, if you mix talon in with it, the, the clear dots, you don't see that pattern. Um, we consistently see better nuts as control with a mix of telone and chlorpicrin, and you can see this really clear curve of decreasing nuts edge as you increase the rate of chlorpicrin with 15 gallons per acre of telone. The next graph I want to show you is exact same as the last one, but now we're looking at the spring of 2019. And as you saw in the previous graph, if you look at the dots that are black, that's no telone, you consistently have much higher nut sedge density without telone. But if you have telone, which is the clear dots, you see not only fewer nut sedge emerging, but a much more rapid decrease in the density. So at around 150 pounds of chloropicrin with 15 gallons per acre, we have almost 100% nut sedge control. And again, the message that we want to get across is, is that combination. Having both telone and chloropicrin in the mix gives you much better nut sedge control than using either of the products. This first image is the non-treated control. And as you would expect, really high density of purple nut sedge. Um, plants are still fairly small on these pictures, but you can see that that purple nut sedge is going to cause some problems. In this image, we have 50 pounds of chloropicrin, still no telone. You can see just as many nut sedge in this picture, and, and in one of the three years, we had significantly more nut sedge where we had put the chloropicrin on its own at 50 pounds. Here, you can see 100 pounds of chloropicrin, still significant number of nut sedge growing in the bed, but you're gonna notice now the plants look bigger, they're much healthier looking at the higher rate of chloropicrin. In this image, you can see it's 150 pounds of chloropicrin. Still see there's a significant number of nut sedge, even at this high rate, but a chloropicrin on its own just is not able to control the nut sedge. The tomato plants look better, they look healthier, but we still have significant weed pressure. Finally, at 200 pounds of chloropicrin per acre, you can tell that the nut sedge density has started to thin out a little bit. As you can see in the graphs, you get decreased density, but still not complete control. There's still a fair number of nut sedge in this plot, and the tomatoes are still looking fairly good. Now we're gonna switch and look at 15 gallons per acre of 1,3-dichloropropene, and you'll notice right off that still did not achieve nut sedge control. So chlorpicrin on its own did not control the nut sedge very well, except at the very highest rates and still did not control it completely. Talon on its own did not control the nut sedge very well. The next image here is 100 pounds of chlorpicrin and 15 gallons per acre of 1,3-dichloropropene or Talon 2. And what you should Notice right away is you have a significant decrease in nut sedge density compared to all the other plots. Not 100% control, but still much less uh, density. And this is in a field with a really vigorous nut sedge population. So this kind of really demonstrates our key point is, is that you need the combination of both products in order to achieve significant control of this really problematic weed. So at 200 pounds per acre of chloropicrin, you can see almost no nut sedge at all in the plot. This is 200 pounds of chloropicrin plus 15 gallons per acre of telone. So at the higher rate, we're getting really good control. Again, it's important to know that there's a lot of variability between seasons. We see this consistently with combinations of telone and chloropicrin. I'm still working out trying to figure out what causes that inconsistency. So what can we conclude from these experiments? Well, first of all, looking at Picor 60, 
right now to maximize your yields and achieve decent control, you're looking at around 300 pounds per acre, up to 350 pounds per acre under TIF. Even at that rate, we were seeing some inconsistency in nuts edge control. When we're looking at the ratio trials, there's a few things we can conclude. First off, we can conclude that neither telone or chloropicrin on their own control nuts edge as well as when you combine the both of them together. 15 gallons per acre of telone seems to be adequate. When it comes to chloropicrin with telone, it seems to be somewhere around 100 pounds to 150 pounds seems to be the rate that we want. But even at 50 pounds, combined with telone, you do get some significant nuts edge control. In every case, you do get a significant yield increase once you fumigate, regardless of what ratio you used or regardless of what product. And we saw that consistently across all trials. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation today, and if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me.